Hello and welcome back to ConsoleDraining.com. Uh, this is lesson two of our GranMA2 basics in MA 3D 3.1. Uh, today we'll be patching some fixtures and we'll be doing some general palleting. So let's jump straight into it. So to add fixtures, we need to click on Setup and we need to click on Patch and Fixture Schedule and we need to create a couple of layers. Now you can do your layers a couple of different ways. We can either layer them as their fixture type, so in which case I could type Martin Mac 250 and add my 250s, or I could name it as, you know, for example, Trust One, whatever makes it easier for you. In my case, we're gonna go with Martin Mac 250 and we're gonna add some Mac 250s. So once you've got your layer created, it's gonna give you this prompt and it's going to give us a couple of options. We can either patch dimmers or we can find things from the library. And since the Mac 250 is in the library, we need to click on from library. We then type the manufacturer of Martin and we know it's a Mac 250 and we'll add in mode for Mac 250s like so, click import. And I'm using mode 4 because that's the, the highest channel count. It gives us a couple of extra features. Um, by default, patching of modes, I always try to use the highest mode possible simply because it allows, you know, more control over things like LED rings and such. But it all depends on how many channels you've got available for your rig. Since we're using only 3D, it doesn't really matter how many channels we consume. So we're going to have a quantity of four. We're going to start the fixture ID at 251, and we'll come back to fixture IDs and channel IDs a little bit later. And we're going to start our patching at 1.100. And we're also going to change the name of them a bit. We just want them to be called Mac251. And if we space it like this, it's going to automatically count them for us. If we hadn't left a space, it would all number them the same. But if we leave it with a space, it knows to start numbering them. Then we're going to patch uh, a couple of dimmers. So we're going to go dimmers. And we're going to go dimmer. And we want two of them. And we want to patch them to 1.1. And we're going to leave the channel ID as 1. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a little bit of wash light. So we're going to go Martin Mac 101. We're going to go from library. And we're going to go 101. And once again, we've got a couple of options depending on what you're using or what your fixtures are. We're just going to go in RGB for the next case. And we're going to patch four of those, and we're going to start their fixed ID at 101. Hello, at 101, and we're going to leave the patching the same as this has already started patching above our hundred channel limit. So the reason I'm leaving a a patch uh, about a hundred channels free is because by default most people patch their dimmers at one, and start their movers on 100. So it's just going along with the standard, but obviously you can patch your movers to whatever you want. Once we've done that, we click the little X and it's going to ask us to save. And at this point, it's going to push the fixtures across to MA3D. So if we come into our combined view, we can see that in MA3D, we've got these little objects sitting down the bottom and we can manipulate them. Uh, we did the connection to MA3D in our previous lesson, uh, lesson one, and if you need assistance doing that, refer to lesson one. It's a very quick little uh, lesson that we did on connecting. So we're going to come here and we're going to click on our assets tab and open 3D objects. And we're going to see all the 3D objects we've got so we can see our four Mac 250s, our two dimmers, and our 101s. So we can align them a couple of ways. We're going to grab our dimmers. We're going to drag them up using the little green thing. And then we're going to rotate the view by holding the right mouse button and using the scroll wheel to select pan. And we're going to bring them to the front. Like so. And then we're going to pan back. 
We're going to place one roughly here. And then we're going to just grab the second one and we're going to put it over there. What we're then going to do is tilt them a bit. And to tilt them, you'll hold the control key. When you hold the control key, it's going to change the little tab that we've got. And it gives us a couple of options. We want to rotate the red one, which just pans them a bit. We're going to pan them sort of in that direction. Now for the moving lights, we're going to rotate them and do that in Granime 2. So if we come back to Granime 2, we click back into our fixture and schedule tab. And we click fixture positions. It gives us a selection of all our layers and we can see them in 3D. So the first thing we want is layer 1. We're going to select all of them, like so. And then we're going to position them. So we're going to go up with the X command. We're going to put them at roughly, we'll type in, let's go 3.5 meters. We're going to bring them a bit back towards us. Position them to X. And we're going to use our align command to align them into a line. Now I clicked on the wrong one there. So we're just going to put them all to minus 2.5. So they're all sitting on top of each other. Click the align button. And align them like so. And then we're going to deselect the align command. And we're just going to do a little bit of fine adjustment. So the up and down part of the wheel... Uh, is raw command and left and right is fine command. Uh, sorry, fine positioning. And we're going to put them roughly there and just make sure that our dimmers aren't in the way. Then we're going to go to our 101s, select them all. We're going to put them at 3 meters. We're going to use our align command again. And we're going to make them fairly wide. And we're going to push them fairly far to the back. Because we'll use them as backlight. Then once we close our window and save. It's going to push that information across to MA3D. And we can see our fixtures here. So we're just going to rotate around. See that they're fine. Uh, MA3D doesn't have the little 101 image. You can download, obviously, extra files for MA3D uh, if you want to. But in which case, we're just going to use the default ones. The next thing we need to do once we've got our fixtures positioned is palettes. And while this guide shows you how to set things up in MA3D. If you're just using the console, you can just leave the fixtures all sitting in a pile and just do the palettes by yourself. So to create palettes, we're going to auto create groups and palettes. So we want to click on auto create, which is located in the setup menu. And we want to create groups for the 250s and the 101s and all the dimmers. We want to create an all group which will create three groups. So just all the dimmers, all the 250s, all the 101s. Um, we can also click create single, which will create single groups, which means you'll have four groups, or 101 or 102, 103, and so on. Uh, in this case, we're not going to do that. We're going to come across to preset. But you can click obviously create single if you want all the single ones the issue with creating all single groups is if you've got a lot of fixtures you're going to fill up your group pool really quickly next we're going to come across to preset we're going to create presets we don't need presets for obviously the dimmers uh, because all they are is a dimmer so we're going to just click on the 250s and the 101s and if we leave all of them selected It'll create presets for all of them, but I don't really want to use any of the macros or anything for the position ones. I just want to select Gobo, Color, and the rest. And we're going to click uh, Merge Global Preset. And by clicking Merge rather than Add Global Preset, it means that any information that it's between all the two fixtures that can be combined together will be done. If we just click Add, it'll do duplicates. 
most of the time you'll find that the pellets that it creates aren't merged anyway and you've got to do it manually uh, which is a bit easier when you've got LED fixtures rather than uh, color wheel fixtures. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up just a little view so we can program. Now we can do this on what's called the command screen or command or screen one if you're on an MA2 console, but we really want a larger playing space. In order to do that, we can use either you know one of our external monitors or we can use in my case screen two or screen three. And screen two and screen three replicate or screen two, three and four replicate the screens of a console. So the one immediately above uh, screen one is screen two and then screen three and screen four is the furthest. So they actually go a bit backwards rather than going left to right they sort of go right to left. So I'm going to use screen two because it also gives us access to our uh, command wheels here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little layout. Now this is when it sort of gets to a position where it's up to you how you want to lay out your desk uh, but I'm just going to show you a really stock basic way of doing it. So we're going to click on groups which will give us the groups that we've created. I'm going to grab our little yellow dot section and just drag because I don't need that many groups and I'm going to drag it over to the right hand side and then I'm going to do pellets and how I brought up the group pellets or sorry the group pool is I clicked on an empty space on the screen and it gave me this option to create basic windows so I want some presets I want position presets and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to drag them and make them small like this and drag them all over the other side and then repeat the process for gobo, color, focus, and beam. And we're going to see that there aren't many focus presets, and I don't imagine I'll need many focus presets. Uh, so we're going to compress it a bit like this, and then I'm going to put in a very small fixture sheet, which just shows what our fixtures are doing. So let's run through and make sure that our fixtures work. So here's our combined view again. We're going to select our dimmers. We're going to click on them and we can see that they're selected at MA3D because they've gone yellow. We can then click on dimmer and we're just going to go at full, which is open. And we can see that they light up. We also notice that they're pointed a little bit further downstage than I want them to be, so we're going to grab them right now. And we're going to tilt them like we did before. And we're also going to do a bit of a focus, so I'm going to grab one of them first. I'm just going to bring it into the centre. like so. And if I wanted to do it, instead of doing one by one, we can also use our align command again. So if I selected both of them, and grabbed the axis that I want to change, which is the green one, I click on it, and then I select align in between, and it's actually going to align the fixtures rather than the uh, the rotation of them, which is kind of not what we want, so I'm going to do it manually. I suspect that maybe because I grabbed the wrong axis. I oh, know, because it rotates on the first one. You can't use the align command there, but we can bring them into the center and we can see that they work. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out what we've done there, so I'm going to click command, and we're going to click clear and if you've got a command wing obviously these buttons are hardware based for you we're then going to check that our 250s work so we're going to click on the all 250 group and we're going to see that all the presets that are selected for those are available we're going to click on dimmer we're going to go open and we're going to see that they work we're then going to click on position and go and pan them a bit and to pan them we can come back to our command screen and use the encoders here to pan once again. These ones will do your slow pan, 
sorry, this is tilt, and the other ones will do your pan. So that was fast, so we're going to bring them around a bit. And we're also going to pan them up. So we can see that they work. So instead of clearing out the screen, we're going to go to 101s and check that they work. So we simply click on the 101s once. We go dimmer, and we go open. And we see that they work as well, and we're going to repeat the process. We're going to click command. We're going to click tilt, and tilt them up like this. In our next lesson, we're going to use some of the palettes that we've created to program some stuff in. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Hughes.